What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo Moo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks when you open a new Moomoo Moo brokerage account they're gonna give you up to 15 free stocks. When you put $100 in the account, which you should be putting $100 in at account opening, you'll get five free stocks. If you put $1,000 in, they will give you 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. You guys go click on that Moomoo link, open up your new Moomoo account today, go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Well, welcome to the largest wealth transfer in 100 years. Q&A with yours truly, Richard Fain. In today's q and A, I'm gonna answer all your questions, guys. Now here is what I'm gonna recommend to you. I don't know how many people we gonna have in the chat. It could be 50 people, it could be 500 people. If you want your questions answered, if this thing gets busy and a lot of people get in the chat, my recommendation is use Super Chat. That will get you to the top of the list. You don't have to use Super Chat. Take your chances, ask your questions, but I can't guarantee I'll get to all of them. It just depends on how many people come in the chat during this hour that I'm gonna be online because I'm gonna be answering questions and I'm kinda of going old school like I used to do where I would do these lives and I would just take all your questions and we would have a, an hour session of just Q&A. So that's what I'm doing tonight. But it's all focused around what? Wealth transfer blueprint that I'm gonna be talking about for all of 2024. That's what my message is gonna be in all of my videos uh, all of my live streams, it's going to be about building wealth and, and all the tools, the financial tools you need in order to do that. That's the reason why I wanted to do this Q&A tonight to kind of kick this thing off. So let's dive in to some questions and go from there. Now, again, I got my laptop in front of me, so I'm going to be poking my head down so I can look at these questions. You guys notice I'm wearing glasses, so I ain't got 20-20 vision and I'm using my iPhone 13 Pro as my monitor. So that's what I'm, I'm looking at and answering the questions into this monitor, but I'm looking at the laptop just to get the questions because they're a little bit better for my eyes. So let's dive in, let me see what we got happening here. And we're gonna start with some questions. Let's see here. Okay, here we go, here we go. Well, what? Do you believe the Fed will do tomorrow, um, January 31st, when they will be making a decision on interest rates, whether they're going to increase interest rates, decrease interest rates, leave interest rates where they are? What do you think they're going to do? That's the question. Well, for me, guys, I believe the Fed will leave interest rates where they are. Currently, the Fed funds rate is 5.5%. And the Fed funds rate is the interest rate banks borrow money from each other. It's not the interest rate you borrow from banks. The interest rate you borrow from banks on your consumer loans is typically tied to what they call the prime rate. The prime rate is normally 3% higher than the Fed funds rate. So that's the rate typically banks will uh, lend you money on that prime rate, which is about eight and a half percent right now. But I don't believe the Fed will mess with rates. What, what the market 
is hoping the Fed will come out and do tomorrow when the Fed chair makes his comments, probably around 2.30 Eastern time tomorrow. So if you guys are not busy, tune in for that. But what the market is hoping the Fed chair says is there's a clear indication that they will reduce interest rates at some point this year. That's what the market wants to get clarity on. You know, when are you going to be reducing? How much are you going to reduce? Because that will tell the market clearly what the forward thinking and the direction is of the Fed. Now, will the Fed chair do that? I don't know. I think he will give some indication, but I don't know how far he will go with that indication. I don't think he'll come out and say, hey, we're going to reduce short term interest rates by 100 basis points and we're going to start doing it in June. I don't think he's going to come out and say that, but he's going to give some type of forward thinking, some type of clarity. And hopefully that forward thinking and that clarity is going to be around reducing short term interest rates, because if that happens, then you'll see the stock market will continue to rally. If the Fed chair comes out and says, you know something, we're going to keep rates higher for longer. We're concerned about inflation. We are not even taking off the table. We, we may even increase rates. If he says that, then that's not what the market wants to hear. You may see a sell off in the stock market. So be on the lookout for it. Of course, you guys know I'm going to deliver some type of video or live stream sometime tomorrow once that happens to kind of give you all my little recap of it. But it is good for you guys who are trying to build wealth and you want to know exactly what's happening with the economy and how interest rates affect assets. It's a good idea to pay attention to the Fed chair tomorrow uh, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So that's that question. So my answer to that is, is I don't believe they will increase short term interest rates. I don't believe they will decrease short term interest rates. I believe they will keep interest rates right where they are. All right, let's keep moving here. Let me make sure I haven't missed anything. We're going to keep moving here. Let's see. What's the difference between a Fidelity 500 index and an S&P 500 index? Nothing other than the company, right? You got one company, which is Fidelity. They have their own 500 index. And basically, that 500 index tracks the S&P 500 index, right? Same thing with um, the S&P 500 index that, v, uh, that uh, Vanguard offers. They're pretty much the same thing, right? They're tracking the S&P 500 index, which has the top 500 companies in America in that index. So Fidelity has a 500 fund. Vanguard has a 500 fund. Charles Schwab has a 500 fund. And many others have 500 funds that are tracking that S&P 500 index. So hopefully that answered your question. Let's keep moving on here. See what else we got. What do you think about the Iraq dinar when it revalues? I don't know anything about that. See, I only deal with things that are in my wheelhouse, things that I have experience around and expertise with. That is not one of them. So unfortunately, won't be able to answer that question. Well, let's keep moving on and see what we got. Let's see, we're going to the gold standard. Eh, I, I doubt that, guys. You know, here's the thing. You hear all these people talk about the dollar ain't this, the dollar ain't that. Oh, but, but listen, guys, the dollar ain't going nowhere. The only way the dollar falls is if the United States of America falls. You do understand that, right? You do know some history about world powers. The only time a currency changes or, so, or, or something changes is when someone comes in and defeats that country, that dominant country. So the only way anything's going to happen with the dollar is if someone comes in and beats the United States in a war or something. And they basically denounce our currency and they have their currency or, or some new currency. But far as anything replacing the dollar, that's not going to happen unless unless the United States is not the number one superpower. If someone comes beat us, then yeah, that could happen. But outside of that, in my opinion, the dollar ain't going nowhere. Cryptocurrency ain't finna replace the dollar. Um, you know, 
Gold is not going to be the gold standard and replace the dollar. It's not. The, the dollar, the U.S. dollar, is the world's currency. The world transact business in the U.S. dollar. Because why? They believe that's the safest way to transact business. So in my opinion, the dollar doesn't go anywhere anytime soon unless somebody knock us off. That's the only way I see that. So let's see what else we got here. Make sure I don't have any super chats in here before I, that I miss. Uh, let's see here. Good afternoon, Richard. Thanks for your valuable insights. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for tapping in to these live streams. Thank you for tapping in and watching the videos. Appreciate that very much. Now let's keep going here. Uh, I'm missing the opportunity for buying opportunities with the market at all time high. Is it best to just wait? Well, you know, it depends on your financial strategy, what you want to do, right? I'm of the belief it's better to be in the market than trying to time the market. I'm of the belief I'm just going to dollar cost average in because I think the market continues to go higher. That's my belief. So no sense of me sitting on the sideline trying to be an expert in time when it's the best time to get in. And guess what? I never get in. Right. There is no perfect time. I get in based on what my financial goals are. And if I believe paper assets can help me get there, then I get in. If I look at the history of the stock market and I say, well, you know something? Over the last 90 years, the stock market has delivered a 7 to 10% rate of return. That's a good multiplier for my money. I'm getting in. And I'm just going to stay in for 10 years. And that's that wealth transfer blueprint that I've been talking about. Start getting your mind around dollar cost averaging in for the next 10 years. Every single month, you put in money every single month for 10 years. That's my blueprint for success, um, in my opinion. I don't, I mean, people could have said five years ago, I'm not getting in, it's too high. Guess what if they would have never gotten in these last five years? It was crazy. I think the next five years are going to be crazy. Why? Because that's where people either make their money or they hold their money is in the stock market. That's one of the top three asset classes in the world. Definitely in the United States, right? Businesses, real estate, stock market. Those are three, three top assets. So in my opinion, I'd rather be in the market, even if it's going up, I just keep dollar cost averaging. It won't always go up. It'll dip and it'll go back. It'll dip. So my goal is, is over the next 10 years to reduce my cost per share. And I do that through dollar cost averaging in over a long period of time. And at some point, if I buy today, at some point in the future, if companies continue to grow, at some point in the future, what I bought it at for today, it'll be worth more tomorrow, and that's where I make my net worth. From where I buy it at today to 10 years from now what it's worth, right? And history tells me it'll be worth seven to 10% more. So I just keep buying, right? I don't worry about trying to be the expert what I do is I just keep buying. So, so you got to look at your financial plan. You got to look at your goals, your, 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 your financial goals, and determine what's the best strategy for me. If I don't put my money in the market to multiply, how do I multiply it? How do I build wealth if I'm just sitting on the sideline waiting on what? I mean, I don't know what you're waiting on. If you want to build wealth and you believe the stock market can help you do that, get your butt in. The history says it can. I'm not the expert. I'm just going off what history says. So it's, you know, that's what people want us to do. These one percenters, they want us to sit on the sideline and, 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 and be pessimistic and be afraid and scared to death. They want you to be there. They, that's exactly where they're at. And all along, they're, 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 they're getting rich. They're getting richer. So don't wait around, figure out what your destination is. And if you believe the stock market can help you get to your destination, get your butt in, start dollar cost averaging in and just think, OK, I'm in this thing for 10 years. And just keep doing that. That would be my recommendation to you. OK, let's see what else we got here. 
and we're going to keep on rolling through these questions because it is a Q&A where I'm going to answer any questions that you guys ask. So let's go. Greetings. Your insight is very well thought out, which is to say that you are speaking without hindsight. My question is this, your advice, not legal. Are you speaking from a level of tax status? I, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I, I'm just a guy who uh, had a nine to five job, right? At 26 years old, got a nine to five job. I was broke, didn't have no net worth. Got into banking at the ground level, management, ground level, management trainee, and I started learning about money. I started learning how money moves through the banking system. I started learning how money moves through our economy. I started learning how the 1% of the wealthiest people in this country control everything, especially when it comes to finances. And what I did was I just learned the rules to the financial game in this country. And I was able to participate. And I was able to participate by doing what? Not trying to be the expert, but just following history, following history, investing in the stock market through 401ks, taxable brokerage accounts, Roth IRAs, getting as much money to multiply itself. Right. I could take a small amount of money on a, on a monthly basis and, and just keep doing that over the years. Keep increasing that investment and it keeps multiplying. See, that's learning the rules to the game, the financial game. They don't want you to know that, but that's the rules. Right. The rules is is you can build whatever wealth you want to build if you know the rules to the financial game and you're able to participate. The other one I learned was real estate for income. Oh, I can buy a piece of real estate, put a tenant in it, get a bunch of tax benefits to reduce my taxable income on this side. But then guess what? I get capital appreciation on that property as I hold it. That's where the wealth is. I buy the property for $300,000. I hold it for 10 years. I get three or 4% compounded appreciation every year. Let's say I got 4% and I hold it for 10 years. I just got 40% compound appreciation on a property that I bought for $300,000, right? So my point is that's how I started learning how to build wealth. And then I obviously worked in the banking business, so I knew exactly how to borrow money because that was what I was trained to, to do for the bank was to evaluate customers' credibility to borrow money from us. So I knew what I needed to do to borrow money in order to buy real estate, and that's what I did. Same with businesses. I learned about businesses because I had most of my customers were not W-2 folks. They were business owners. And I'm looking at these people, and I'm talking to these people, and they were no smarter than me. They were just people who figured out what? That there was a problem out there, and they came up with a solution to solve it. And they started a business and they did well. So those three things, I just learned the, 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 the rules to this financial game in this country that, 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 you know, people hold their money or they make their money in what? Stock market, real estate, businesses. That's it. Once I learned that, I just started applying it to my life. That's pretty much it, guys. So I'm no expert in anything. I'm just a guy who's been doing this for 25 years Right. And I build a level of wealth based on the one percent's financial rules. I'm not a one percenter, but I use their rules. I use their methods to multiply money. And it worked in my favor. And that's what I teach and talk about on this YouTube channel. All right. Let's keep let's keep moving here. I thought I saw there's a super chat. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate you, man. What do you think about accumulating I, I believe that's Tesla. Well, y'all know if you've been rocking with me, I'm a huge Tesla fanboy, right? I, I bought Tesla, made money on Tesla, sold Tesla, bought Tesla again, made money on Tesla. A couple videos ago, maybe three or four days ago, I did a video about Tesla saying, hey, if Tesla gets to this strike price, this target price, I'm buying. Now, it hadn't gotten to my target price, so I'm not buying it. Now, I'm not saying you can't buy it where it's at. Because I think you can still make a lot of money buying it where it's at. You hold it, ride it out. I believe Tesla will go back to, 
you know, 250, 260, 270, 280 per share before the end of the year. So that's up to you. But for me, it needs to be at $150 per share before I need to get in, right? Because I already have a long-term position uh, in Tesla. I have a 10 to 15 year long-term position in Tesla already. So that's really the, the, the big investment for me. But now if it gets down to my target price, my target buy price, then I'm all in, man. I'll take some of my reserve money out of the money market, dump it in Tesla because I know Tesla's gonna go back up at some point. I don't know when, but it will. Tesla's done this, man, for the last, what, since 2020? It's had these big old swings since 2020. And guess what? Every time it swings down, I buy, and it, then it swings back up, I sell. That's my short-term position with Tesla. Long-term, I think long-term, it's gonna be the most valuable company in the world. That's what I believe. That doesn't mean y'all gotta believe that, but that's what I believe. And I believe my long-term position in Tesla, when I'm in the golden years, you know, 15 years from now, I'm gonna be happy with the return on that. So those are my two plays in Tesla. I love Tesla as a company. When you're the number one in something, guys, especially when you're talking about big boy companies, Tesla is the number one EV manufacturer in the world. Plus, they got the largest charging network in the world. That's my opinion, right? So anytime you're number one like that and you're one of the top five most valuable companies in the world, I, I'm not going to bet against that. I'm not going to bet against that. But you got to do what's best for you. Uh, do your due diligence. As uh, far as I'm concerned, I think it's a great buy where it's at for someone that's just starting to get in. Um, but you got to make that decision. But I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead here. Um, what else we got? Should I put option or call on Tesla? I don't know nothing about no puts and, and all that stuff. Calls and puts. and all. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm a just a old basic vanilla traditional investor. I don't do any of that stuff. Why? I don't have time. I ain't got time for it. All I want to do is be able to say, okay, is that a good blue chip company? Does it have a proven historical track record of making money? And if it does, then boom, I'm in. That's all I do. You got to ask somebody else about the options and the puts and all that stuff. That's not my expertise, nor do I ever want it to be my expertise. But I appreciate the question, though. We got another super chat here from Dope Law. Thank you. I appreciate you. Do you listen to Wall Street Trapper, Larry Jones, Smart Money Bro, or Mommy Trader? No, with the exception of Larry Jones. Larry Jones is my guy. I like Larry. I don't know Larry personally. He and I have traded some... Some, some DMs on Instagram, but man, I like his style. I, I, I like the way he delivers his content when it comes to the stock market. I like the, I'm not saying advice, but I like his recommendations. I think he's a straight shooter. I think he really has the people uh, first, money second. And I'm not saying the rest of them people y'all named don't. I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you, Larry, if I'm gonna refer somebody uh, to, to, to somebody on YouTube that has a, a, a probably a deeper level of knowledge about the, the technical aspect, the technical aspect of the stock market, then I would refer them to Larry because that's not my bailiwick. I, 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 I don't know nothing about no technical nothing. I don't know any of that stuff. Reading charts and all that, I don't do none of that. I just go with common sense. If it's Tesla, one of the top five companies in the world, do I trust Elon? Do, do, do I like the, the history? I invest. But you guys got to understand, though, I, 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 don't, I don't take a lot of my money and put it in individual stocks. So I don't, I don't have a need to learn what level of knowledge Larry has when it comes to analysis, the technical. And I don't need to learn all of that because I'm not out here picking individual stocks like that. 80% of my money, 85% of my money goes into ETFs that track the S&P 500, that track the total stock market, that track sectors. Those are passive investments. I don't need to be no expert. Vanguard the expert. But if you're out here picking individual stocks trying to build a portfolio, Larry Jones is probably a great channel to go check out and, and watch because if, you're a, if you want to 
learn all that technical stuff. If you want to go to Larry's channel, and, and, and I think he'll 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 give you some good insight. You're not gonna get that from my channel. My channel is about about just generally building wealth and using these 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 three asset classes to do that. Right? It, 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 it's not more. It's not about being technical with any of these assets that I talk about. I don't get too technical with real estate for income. Why? Because I don't think you need to. It's pretty simple. You buy a property in a good neighborhood where people have a desire to live, you put a tenant in it, and you rinse and repeat every two years. See, that's my philosophy. A lot of other people on YouTube go way in depth and all, that ain't my thing, right? That's not my thing. My thing is, is hey, let's just use these asset classes because they're proven, they have historical track records, put your money in them, rinse and repeat, wait 10 years, wait 15 years, boom. Big old pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's my channel. Others out there get a little bit more sophisticated, break things down more. I, I ain't finna do all that. That's too much work for me. I'm retired. I don't want no job. So I, I can't do all of that. What I can do is just give you, you know, the stuff that helped me get to where I was. So, but, but I appreciate the, the, the question and I appreciate the super chat. So let's keep moving here. Um, Vincent Palmer, 401k, Roth, money multiplies rules to the game. Learn them, real estate for income, buy property, hold for 10 years. I'm rocking with you, Vincent. I'm rocking with you. Long term, guys, buy good properties in good neighborhoods that people have a desire to live. Take care of your tenant. Be patient, wait on your appreciation, and just duplicate that. Rinse and repeat. That's what I did. Every two years, I would just buy another one of those single family home properties in one of those good, solid communities. Not some rich community, not some affluent community, just hard working middle class folk communities where people had a desire to live. They wanted to provide their child with a decent school to go to for a decent education and they had home ownership pride. They wanted to be around good people. That's it, man. You buy properties in those neighborhoods, put tenants in them, and just wait. Just rinse and repeat. So let's keep moving. Rich, what do you think about Lucid and Reviton stock? I, I don't know nothing about those two companies. Again, guys, I don't want to know nothing about the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth place company. I don't care about them. What I want to rock with is the one who number one. See, I, I, I don't have time to be trying to dissect Riverton or dissect Lucid. Got time for that. I'm retired. I want my money to just multiply itself as easily as possible. I do not want to do a whole lot of work if I don't have to. So what do I do in order to collapse time frames and not do all this crazy, unnecessary work that I don't want to do? I just go to the number one person. That's why I buy Apple. They're the number one. Guys, I don't go buy Samsung. I don't go buy any of them. Apple, number one. Never lost yet putting my money in Apple, right? Tesla, never lost yet putting my money in Apple. Vanguard, S&P 500 VOO ETF. Never lost no money there. Vanguard. Information Technology VGT. Tech ETF. Monster. Monster. So, so my point is, I don't, I don't worry about all the rest of these companies being number one. I just want the big boys who are number one who have a proven track record of success. That's where I put my money at to multiply when it comes to the stock market. So unfortunately, I can't give you any comparison, but there are plenty of guys out there on YouTube that can. I'm just not one of them. So let's keep moving here. What do you think about investing in REITs? I think that's a great, and a REIT is just a real estate investment trust, right? That's a real estate investment trust is a, is a REIT. And I like them. I like them, especially if you get a good one like Vanguard, uh, real estate ETF VNQ. I love it. So if you want some of your portfolio to be in real estate, but you don't necessarily want to own toilets and tenants, you deal with toilets and tenants, then you can go get yourself a, re a, 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 a REIT, right? Um, and, and like I said, Vanguard has a great one. 
So, but again, you go out and do your own homework and figure out what you want to do. But I like them. I like it as a diverse uh, diversification investment, right? Let's say I got tech. Let's say I got healthcare. Let's say I got the S and P 500 index. And then if I want to have a little small play over here in a, in a, in a real estate investment trust, then I'd probably go think about picking up VNQ. Um, you got companies like Simon Property Group in it, which is one of the largest uh, real estate trust companies in, in the world. They're, they're, in that, they're in that particular fund over at Vanguard. So, but yeah, I, I do like them. Let's see what we got here. What's your go-to ETF? Appreciate the question, Chris. And my go-to, my go-to ETF, my go-to, my favorite ETF is going to be Vanguard Information Technology, VGT. That's one that I, and I don't hit home runs. I don't look to hit home runs, but I hit a home run on that one, right? I normally hit singles, doubles, the occasional triple, never shoot to hit home runs, but I hit a home run on that one. That's my favorite Vanguard ETF. Now, don't get me wrong. It's over $500 a share the last time I looked at it. So it's a monster. You got to remember, though, but I bought, I bought VGT, man, back in 2020, back in like September 2020. I bought it for like 317 Now, I, I exited my position middle of last year because I just, it was enough for me. That's one thing you got to understand, too, guys, is when you, when you set goals for yourself for these investments, when you hit your target sell price, get out of it, right? That's, at least that's what I do. Now, hindsight's 2020. If I'd have stayed in it, I would have had a lot more upside, but that wasn't guaranteed to me. I didn't know, I didn't have a crystal ball. So I did get out of it a little bit early, but I'm happy with what I made, right? I had a 30% return on my money over a three-year hold. I'm okay with that. But that's my favorite ETF of all time. Now, my favorite wealth building long-term ETF is certainly Vanguard S&P 500 VOO. Um, so just want to clarify that. What else do we got here? Investing in ETFs 500 per month and not selling over a decade would build wealth. It depends on what you invested in. I believe if you invest that $500 a month in uh, in, 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 a, in an ETF or index fund that tracks the S&P 500, I'm talking about really tracks it, I, 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 I think you got a good chance of building wealth. I think you got a good chance of having a nice little pot of gold at the end of your rainbow. That's my opinion. Here's the goal, though. The goal is let's start at 500, but let's go ahead and increase our skill set so we can make more income, create some side hustles so we can get to $1,000 a month. That's when it really starts getting real good. Because if you can do $1,000 a month at an 8% rate of return over the next 10 years, you'll have a couple hundred thousand dollars in your, in your, in your, in your, in your pot at the end of the rainbow. So I, I'm telling people on this wealth transfer blueprint, get yourself to $1,000 a month. Well, I ain't got $1,000 a month. <laughs> Increase the skill set. Get you, get you more income. Get you some side hustles, right? Give up some of that leisure activity. Give up some of that consumer activity and start turning that free time into production. I tell you, build wealth, guys. I had to do it that way. I had to give up a lot of Saturdays and Sundays of, of leisure time to do what? Concentrate on my side hustles. But now, at, you know, I, I'm a middle-aged guy and I've been retired for five years. I'm glad I did it. Because I if I hadn't have done that, I'd still be working. I'd still be working. So all I'm telling you is, the goal is, is get your income up, keep it, don't spend it to make other people wealthy, keep it, and then multiply. That's the key. The more you can put into that S&P 500 ETF, and again, that's just a recommendation. You go out and do your own homework and figure out what works best for you. I'm just giving you um, illustration, right? Not intended to give you advice, but just to let you know that's one of the paper assets, the S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index is one of the products out there from a stock market standpoint that can help you get there. But the goal is, okay, let's start with five, but I don't want to stop there. I want to keep leveling up. 
I want to go as high as I can go. I want a thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Because at the end of that 10 years, if you can do that consistently, whoo, it'll it's a game changer. It's a game changer. So that, that's my answer on that. So let's move on. Let's see right here. Um, FYI, there are several lawsuits involving Tesla, but the most recent one is about Elon Musk's 56 billion pay package. A Delaware judge voided the compensation plan on Tuesday, January 30th. I don't care. I don't care about that. I, I don't. That, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm trying to build wealth, man. Tesla ain't going nowhere. Elon ain't going nowhere. So, hey, uh, if that's important to you, great. To me, I, that ain't important to me. I don't care anything about that. All I care about is, is Tesla the number one EV company in the world? Do they got the number one charging station network in the world? Are they making money? They make the most money, profit, per sold EV than anybody else in the world. So they're number one in the right metrics for me, right? I don't care if they got to cut their prices in China in order to sell more vehicles. Come on, man. All businesses do that. But see, we concentrate on Tesla when they do it because of Elon. But all companies do that. You think all companies don't cut their prices if they're in a market that they deem valuable to their company? They won't cut their prices in order to be good in that market? Of course they do. All companies do that. That ain't just Tesla, but that's what the headline will say. So you, gotta, you guys got to get out of the minutia and worrying about all this other external crap and just focus on what the company really does and, and where are they positioned in their industry. Tesla's at the very top of the EV industry. They're number one. That's all I care about. I don't care about no lawsuit against Elon Musk and all this other. I don't care about that. But I'm not saying you don't have to care about it. I just don't. And I've given you the reason why I don't care about it. So let's move on. Um, April M. Richard, I'm thinking. All right, let me. They move. You moved on me, April. Let me get back to you. Here you go. You move real quick. Richard, I'm dealing with MLPs, Master Limited Partnerships. How much more complex do your taxes become? I don't even know what that is. Again, guys. We get ourselves in these things, we have no clue what we're getting ourselves into. And, and, and I'm not sending you out, April, I'm just saying, if you're asking me that question, that tells me you don't really know what it is. Because if you did, you know what, what did you say here? Complex do our taxes become? You would know that. You would have went to a CPA, a, a certified public accountant, before you pulled the trigger on any of this stuff and said, walk me through what my tax implications might be if I get involved in this. That's what we got to start doing, guys. We got to stop getting into stuff. We have no clue what we're getting into. And I'm not saying April don't have a clue. I'm just giving you my feedback. Because if you're asking me that question, eh, you should know the answer to that if you're involved in this master, whatever it is. You should, you should know. So I'm sorry. I don't know anything about that. But my recommendation is go see your certified public accountant and ask them that question, and maybe they can walk you through what the tax profile looks like for something like that. Let's keep moving here. Uh, Greg A, FYI, there are several, okay, I already read that one. Let's keep moving. Oh, here we go, Josh. Should I sell my property that I had for three years and take the 100K profit or hold long-term in hopes that the property Value will increase and maybe rent until I find another deal. What's your goal? What's your long-term goal with this property? Right? Was it just a property for you to level up the net worth and then dump it? Or is it a property that you want to hold long-term, pay off the mortgage if there's a mortgage, and then use it for income for the rest of your life? It depends on what your plan is. Right? Should I sell my property that I've had for three years and take 100K profit or hold long term in hopes that the property value will increase? Again, back to what's the plan? What's the wealth transfer blueprint? What's the plan? What's the plan and how does this piece of real estate fit into my wealth transfer blueprint? What is the plan? I've told you, if the plan was just to level up the net worth, and you're comfortable with the 100K level up, 
get out of it. If the plan is to own a string of these things or just own this one, have it paid off free and clear and just take the income for the rest of your life from the tenant, then that's what you do. But you got to have a plan for real estate, guys. You can't just go out and buy real estate and have no plan for it. The plan has to be, okay, I'm going to buy this real estate. I'm going to hold it long term to build what? Net worth. And then I'm going to sell it. That was my plan. My plan was never to buy real estate and hold it for the rest of my life and be a landlord. That was never my plan. My plan was take a small amount of my money, go get a large amount of money from somebody else, the bank, buy these properties, take 20% of my money, and I control what? 100% of the property. Go get 80% from the bank, which is five to one leverage, and I just keep rinsing and repeating that. Each property, I want to get at least $100,000 worth of appreciation. And I just kept doing that. Buying a property, putting a tenant in it, waiting. Even through the 2008 downturn when, when things were looking really, really bad. What did I do? I didn't panic because I know real estate in good neighborhoods, it's going to bounce back at some point. I may have to hold it 5, 10, 15 years, but it'll bounce back if it's in a good neighborhood where people have a desire to live. So I just held on to my properties and I bought more. Right? So all I'm telling you is you got to have a plan. My plan was never to own them for the rest of my life. The plan was buy these things until you got a million dollars worth of equity in your portfolio and then sell it, sell them, start selling them. That was my plan. Your plan may be different, but you got to have a plan. You got to have an end game for this property. And, it, and, and once you have an end game, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Let's see here. Um, G-Man. Yo, Rich, love your content. My former primary property, now rental, worth 370. I have a credit card debt of about 25K to 30K. Should I do a cash out refi? Need to get rid of this debt. Here's my rule of thumb on that, guys. Never take equity from an appreciating asset and put that equity in something that is depreciating or debt that does not put money in your pocket. So personally, no, I would not take equity from an appreciating asset and pay off credit card debt. What I would do is I would get me some side hustles and earn my butt off for about six to 12 months, working 20 hours a day, sleeping four hours a night, and I'd make me 25 or 30K from my side hustles, which you can do within a year or less. And that's what I would use to pay off the credit card debt. There is no way I would take equity from an asset that's appreciating in value to buy something that ain't gonna do nothing, ain't gonna put no money in my pocket. I don't care what the interest rate is on the credit card debt. I will take equity out of real estate and put it in another asset that's gonna go up in value. So I'll take it out of real estate, put it in a stock market. I'll take it out of real estate, put it in more real estate. I'll take it out of real estate and put it into a viable business. But I'm not going to take it and pay off credit card debt, student loan debt. Uh-uh. All I got to do is get my butt out there, take my downtime and stop being... And I'm not saying you, uh, uh, G-Man. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying, in general, I wouldn't take my... Uh, my, I wouldn't take my, my, I would take my free time and I would turn that into a side hustle. That's what I would do and just work my tail off for a year. Boom, I'm out of the credit card debt. Now I got my equity intact. I'm out of the credit card debt. I got a side hustle now that's producing all this money. And guess what I can do with it? Go buy me more real estate or put it in the stock market. That's what I would do. Um, let's, keep, let's keep moving here. All right, we got, uh, I think that's, I want to say that's Ali. He says, good doctor. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you bestowing that, that, that honor on me. <laughs> good doctor. I thank you. Um, can you revisit your Magnificent Seven for those of us who are not tracking, please? Okay. Magnificent Seven, home run so far. Home run. Tesla is the only one that's, that's, that's striking out right now. But I don't even look at Tesla striking out. What I look at it is, is every, every single week, guess what? The portion of the Magnificent Seven money that goes into the Magnificent Seven, it's just buying more, right? Just, just, just chomping up more shares. The lower it goes, great. Because remember, I got a, 
I got a, I, I had like a 15 month hold. So I got, I got to the rest of um, 2024 in the Magnificent Seven, unless I doubled my money before that. But right now, six of the seven Magnificent Seven killing it. You're talking about NVIDIA, Meta. Have you seen what Alphabet is doing? Amazon, Microsoft, Apple? Come on, come on. That's a home run, man. I told y'all that, though. I told y'all that. Back in what, November when I started this thing? I think it was November of 2023 when I told y'all that. And that was, that, that, that was before the, the, the crazy December run. And again, guys, I, I'm not no expert. I, I, nowhere close to being an expert in the stock market. I don't know any of that stuff. Like I said, my, 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 my good buddy Larry knows. But guys, I'm a guy that knows how to make money, man. I, I, I follow the money. I, I, I follow the 1%. I follow the 1%, guys. Even though I'm not a 1%er, I follow the 1% because I know how this game in this country works when it comes to building wealth. You just follow the 1%. They're going to take you where the money at. I knew. I, look, when you look at the S&P 500 and you carve out those seven companies for 2023, it was like a 90% ROI, guys. Those seven companies, if you carve them out of the S&P 500 and look at them as a collective and you look at their ROI for 2023, it's like 90%, man. I mean, that's a no-brainer. So for me, it's going well. It's going well. Now, again, I'm not saying it'll go well for you. I'm just telling you, I'm one of these guys. I don't worry about dollar cost averaging in and things keep going up. I, I don't really worry about that. I just keep doing what I'm doing. Because I believe no matter what happens, I may have to hold it longer, but no matter what happens, I believe NVIDIA will be more valuable 10 years from now, five years from now, two years from now than it is today. That's what I believe. Same thing with Apple. Same thing with Tesla. Same thing with Microsoft, same thing with Alphabet, same thing with Amazon, and same thing with Meta. I just think they're going to be more valuable tomorrow than they are today. So I don't worry about, oh my God, NVIDIA is trading at X. I don't care. I'm buying. Why? Because I don't think they're nowhere near where they're going to be in 10 years or five years. That's my philosophy. So you got to come up with a strategy that works for you. But the Magnificent Seven has been, a, again, it's been a home run for me. Let's keep moving here. African King. Why would any sane person purchase an electric car? <laughs> I agree with you. I don't own any. <laughs> I wouldn't purchase one. Put your dog all right. I'm going to purchase the stock. Right? I got to purchase the stock, man. I don't own any Teslas. I'm not an electric vehicle fan. The only way I'm buying one is if they give me one for free. I'm not spending my hard-earned money anytime soon to buy one unless they make me. Outside of that, I like gasoline engines. I wanna hear my stuff, right? So I get you, I get you American King, but hey man, it ain't about the car. It ain't about the car, man. It's about multiplying money for me. It ain't about the cars. I keep telling y'all, Tesla is a tech company that makes cars, not a car company that has tech. No, they're a tech company. That's how I look at them. I don't look at them as a damn car company. I look at them as a tech company with a crazy, over-the-top CEO. I love that. So let's move. What else we got in here? Um, Nelson, Enrique, Vasquez, Lopez. That's a long name. Let's see what your question is. Do you only invest in the Meg 7 on the single stock portfolio or do you invest in other companies? Good question. Um, prior to the Magnificent Seven, I would invest in Tesla and Apple. And then I would invest in uh, financial services companies like Bank of America, or Wells Fargo. The reason I like financial services companies is because of my background in banking and I know how these companies make money. And it was a good opportunity for me to hold money get a good dividend and a little bit of growth. It was sort of like my money market account before 
the money market rates went crazy, right? This was back when money market rates, you wouldn't get nothing. So I would, I would hold my money in Bank of America and in Wells Fargo in their stock. They paid me a nice little dividend on a quarterly basis and it was easily, easily liquidated. The stock price didn't fluctuate that much, so I wasn't worried about it going to zero or anything like that. So that's, that's when I would buy those financial services companies. Now that money market rates are up, I'll put, I put that money in the money market account and now I just buy what? The Magnificent Seven. So those are the only individual stocks that I'm gonna buy right now. That may change in the future, but for right now, just the Magnificent Seven. And then obviously 80% of my money is going in what? Big boy ETS. So that's it, that's it. 80, 20 split right now, okay? So let's keep moving. Uh, let's see here. Crystal Ball, Mr. Richard, thank you for sharing. You have ever shout, shorted a stock. Thank you for sharing. Have you ever shorted a stock? No, I have not. I keep telling y'all guys, I, <laughs> that's, not my, that's not my thing. I don't care anything about that. Don't get me wrong. I know people make a lot of money in it. Uh, but, but again, guys, y'all got to understand, I, I, I'm not one of these guys that chase money. I, I, what I look to do is, is here's my lifestyle. Here's what I need for my lifestyle. This is what, th that's what I chase. So the money is just a tool. So I don't care about short and stock. I don't care about options. Yeah, I know you can make a ton of money, but you can lose a ton of money. I don't know anything about that. And I'm an old dog that ain't finna learn no new tricks. So I just stick to what's, what, what's worked for me for 25 years. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Just not my belly wick. So let's keep moving. Dodge J. Black Rock's Rick Reader states... The Fed is not in any rush to cut rates. Do you still think a rate cut will happen in March or further in the year? I believe there will be rate cuts this year. I don't believe they will be, uh, certainly won't be tomorrow, but March, I don't know. It depends on the data. It depends on the CPI inflation report data. It depends on the job uh, the, uh, the jobs reports, um, it depends on the economy. I, I, think, I think there's pressure on the Fed, though, to start reducing. I think there is pressure. Again, I keep telling all the 1% controls the Fed, in my opinion. And I think the Fed is already, I think the 1% has already told the Fed it's time, right? Now, I don't know if they're saying March or June or somewhere down there later on in the year, but they gotta, they're going to cut. They're going to cut. I saw some inflation report today um, where inflation is a lot less than what we see in the, the CPI reports. It's a lot less than that. So I, I think there's pressure on them to, to start reducing. And I think it, it will happen. I just don't know if it'll happen in, in, in March. It could go. But I know at some point in 2024, they got to start reducing. That's the marching orders from the one percent. Let's keep moving here. Um, American King, Tesla has a bad reputation now. Okay, fine. I'm gonna keep making money with them. You can, you can worry about their reputation. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Let's keep going here. April M, Anthony, have you thought about, oh, that must be a, that must be a question for somebody else in here. So here's the deal, guys. We got a lot of questions coming. Keep them coming. We're going to stay on here probably for another, shoot, probably for another 30 minutes. So if you got questions and you want to get them to the top, obviously, Super Chat is the best way to do that. If not, stick them down there and I'll get to them when I get to them. Um, the whole point of this discussion is to answer your questions around the wealth transfer blueprint, right? I believe over these next 10 years, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for a lot of us who have not built wealth to build wealth. And I think paper assets is a good way to do it. I think real estate for income is a good way to do it. And I think starting a business is a good way to do it if you have a solution to a problem out there in the market that, that you believe can solve a lot of problems, right? So I think those three asset classes are where you should concentrate and hang your hat, right? Over these next 10 years though, but you're gonna have to discipline yourself, right? You, you're gonna have to live on less than what you make. You're gonna have to live on a plan, which is a personal budget. You're gonna have to 
you know, stay out of consumer debt and you're going to have to save and invest. Now, if you're willing to do that for, for 10 years, then I think you'll be better off net worth wise uh, than you are today. But you got to make a commitment. You got to commit, make a commitment to yourself and to your family. Right. Being in these 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 Q and A's, whether it be my channel or someone else's channel, means nothing if you don't take the information that's helpful to you and utilize it. If if if, if one thing you leave with tonight is you don't have to be the expert in any of those areas that I just talked about, I, I've told y'all I'm not an expert in any of those areas. I, I don't I don't try to play one on YouTube. Right. I'm just a regular guy who back was against the wall and I knew I didn't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. Like my mom did almost. Right. Like my grandparents worked pretty much all their life. I, I didn't want to go down that route. So so for me, my back was against the wall. I had no other choice but to figure out a way to learn this financial system in this country and, and use it to my benefit, which is what I did. So all I do is I come on this YouTube channel and I give y'all that information every single day. I got an email from, not an email, but a, a comment on one of the videos from today. One of the la I think the last one I dropped today, I got a comment. And I peruse the comments, but I don't, I don't respond back because I, I get it. But I'll peruse from time to time. So I get this comment where a guy says, hey, Richard, I uh, love your channel, but... Uh, uh, it just looks like it's, it, it, it's, it's starting to be real competi uh, repetitive. And I said to myself, I can tell you don't even watch my channel. You don't even, you're just some guy that's randomly passing by. Because the people that watch my channel, I do that on purpose. It's intentional. The stuff that I say, guys, is intentional. I say the same old thing intentionally. Because I know how the human brain works. It, it, it needs repetition. And if you rock with me, I'm talking about if you listen every day, I'm going to have a spin on something, but it's always information that's helpful, but it's repetitive because that's how we learn, right? When you're in grade school, when you first walk into Algebra 1, most of us didn't know anything about Algebra 1. We didn't know how to do Algebra, but guess what you did in that class for that whole year? The same old thing. By the time you left that class, most of us, some of us, we knew more about algebra when we started the year. That's the concept, guys. That's how we learn. That's how people change their behavior with money. I'm not here to entertain you. You looking for an entertainment channel, you hit the wrong channel. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not trying to sit around and come up with 50 million concepts and 50 million different videos and 50. Guys, I'm, listen, I'm retired, man. I ain't got time for all that. So I'm going to give you what I feel is the best thing to give you. And if you want to rock with it, rock with it. If you don't, you don't. But it's, 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 it's intended to be repetitive because that's how we learn. All right, let's move on. Let's get some questions here because we ain't got much time. I'm going to be out of here at 6.30. I'm sorry, 7.30. So, so let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get in here and get some more questions answered. I got one right here from Road 2. One million. What do you think about cybersecurity? What stocks would you invest in or if you did already? Well, I think cybersecurity is part of tech, right? It's part of tech. So I think it's the future, right? I, I, cybersecurity is, is, is more and more needed with, with the advancement of, of hackers and criminals, cyber criminals. So I, I don't think it's going away. I think it's a, it, it's, it's a, a, a great industry because it's, it's tied into, what, security. So yeah, I think if you can find, personally, the way I would do it, I'd go find the best cybersecurity company out there in the world, or, or definitely in the United States. That's where I would hang my hat. That's what I would invest in. All your little pop-ups, mm -mm. go find the very best one in that industry. That's where I hang my hat, and I just get on the rocket ship with them. That's what I would do. Now, I don't invest in cybersecurities type stocks, but I do invest in the tech industry. And I'm sure some of the, well, probably S&P 500 ETF that I invest in, maybe even VGT, they may, they may have some of that sprinkled in there. But individual stocks, if I were to buy individual stocks of, 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 of cybersecurity companies, I'm going to find number one in the industry. And that's where I hang my hat. All right, let's keep moving. 
let's see here. What if interest rates don't fall and in fact go up in 24 and beyond? Will you move your money to treasuries? No. No. Because if interest rates keep going up, guess what's going to happen to the stock market? Guess what's going to happen to assets? They're going to go down. And guess what I'm going to be doing when they go down? Buying more. Why? Because at some point they go back up. See, I don't need the money that I'm investing right now, guys. I don't need it for another 15 years. I'm 55. I don't need it till I'm 70, 75. I plan on doing this, work, you know, doing my little thing, making money until I'm in my 70s. So, so I, I don't mind if, if assets fall in the short term. Matter of fact, I welcome it because that's a buying opportunity. Same thing I told a lot of you guys in 2022 when everybody was, oh, I'm selling it all. And I know I helped. I know I had a couple thumbnails that were a little crazy. I, I'm with you. But once you got into the video, you clearly understood my position on buying assets in 2022. I kept telling y'all, they're on sale. This is where you build your wealth. This is a big wealth jump. And the people that listened to me, and I know some of them did because they emailed me and they DM me and said, Richard, I jumped on this thing in 22 when you said to jump on it. And man, whoo, my portfolio right now, my, 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 my net worth is double. Why? Because they bought assets in 22 when they were down. While most people were running, just like old Warren Buffett says, be fearful when people are greedy. Be greedy when people are fearful. All he's saying there is, is when everybody want to buy stocks, be a little bit cautious. When everybody want to sell stocks, that's when you go all in. Now, here's the situation, though. You, you got there's a fine line there because some people might say, well, Richard, stocks are going up right now. Why would I buy? Well, here's the deal. If you ain't got no wealth, you trying to build wealth, get on the rocket ship. If you already got wealth and you're good with your wealth. And you're just waiting on, you know, I, I understand you're not buying now. But if you're dead broke, you ain't got no net worth. I'm not sure what you're waiting on. You better get on the rocket ship. Because again, fundamentally, I believe the companies that I invest in, the ETFs that I invest in, fundamentally, I believe they'll be better companies tomorrow than they are today. So if you ain't got any wealth, I don't think you have the luxury to wait around and try to time the market. I think you got to get in. You got to start buying assets. You're running out of time. So that, that's the way I look at it. No matter what the Fed does, I'm going I'm to buy assets. Right? I'm going to buy assets. If they keep rates higher for longer, I'm going to buy. If they reduce rates, I'm going to buy. Now, what I may do, if they reduce rates over the next two to three years and they just come down where 30-year fixed rate mortgage rates get under 5%, get under 4%, Will I shift some of my money from the stock market that, that would, would be normally, you know, going into the stocks? Would I shift that money and put it in real estate? Absolutely. That's all I would do. If one asset becomes better to put my money in and I get a better return on it, I take my money that I would put in stocks and I put it in real estate. Right now, real estate is not the best play for me because I can't make no money in real estate. Not, not as an individual person because I got to go out and get loans through the prime real estate fund that I'm starting, we won't have any loans. So I can buy real estate anytime I want to through that fund. But that's not my personal real estate. That's the fund's real estate. But if I'm buying personally, I borrow money. So I can't borrow money at the right interest rate right now in order for the cash flow to make sense. So guess what do I do? I put it all in the stock market. because That's where I'm getting the best return. If that changes, don't get me wrong, I will take my money from the stock market and put it in real estate or a portion of it. So you just got to figure out what, what's the best asset and then where you're going to get the best return on your money. And that's where I tell people to concentrate, start putting money in that. So let's keep moving here. Sam Smith 25. Let me see. I might have had a... Did I have... Yeah, I did have a super chat. I'm sorry, Jason. I appreciate it, man. My bad on that one. My bad. Uh, so, so Jason, thank you for the super chat. Here's your question. How do you come up with a target price when buying, selling positions on in ETFs or individual stocks? Well, here's what I do. Just like I'm doing, let, let's use Tesla as an example. So I have a long-term position in Tesla. All that means is 
no matter what the price is doing, I'm investing long term through dollar cost averaging. Same thing with ETFs. So, so, so when I go every month to automatically make my ETF, you know, it's automatic, right? It doesn't matter what the price is. The money automatically just, just goes into it. That, that's the long term plan. Because, see, I believe based on history, it doesn't matter what the stock price is. If I do it long enough, my average cost per share over 10 years is going to be less. Right. It's going to be less than somebody that just kind of spot buys over 10 years. So so I, I don't worry about the stock price or the ETF price on the long term play, because I believe long term I'm going to make money because I'm going to buy per share lower. Now, on the short term play. Target price matters to me if I got a short term play like I'm waiting on, on Tesla. So here's how I look at it. I say to myself, OK. Over the last year, let's take 2022, 23, and I look at Tesla's high water mark. Let's say Tesla's high water mark is $290 a share. That's what it hit, you know, tail end of 22, 23. So I say to myself, okay, what are you really trying to accomplish, Richard? Well, really, I, I believe Tesla can do $250 a share all day long, anytime, quickly. Now, 290 is a stretch. It may take them a while to do that, but 250, that's a no-brainer. So what do I do? I say, okay, how much money do you want to make per share on this play? I want to make $100 per share. So for me, if I believe Tesla can hit 250 at any time, the play for me or the target buy price for me, if I want to make $100 a share, is 150 a share. Now, again, this ain't scientific. I'm no analyst. It's not, oh, that's not, that's not correct. I don't care about that. In my little mind, I look at it as $100 a share. I don't care what no expert says. In my little mind, it's my money. I can think how I want to think. So in my little mind, I say to myself, Tesla hit 250 at any point because it, it, it does that all the time. Matter of a month. Okay, if it gets down to 150, that's my target price because I can make $100 a share at some point in the next six months. And that's when I buy. So that's why earlier in, the, in, in this conversation here, I said I was waiting for Tesla to get to 150, but it's not there yet. It may not get there. I think I looked at it today. It was 190. So it may not get there. Then I don't buy it. Remember, I always got my long term dollar cost average play. So I don't worry about the short term stuff. If it works for me, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I leave the money in the money market. I get my five and a quarter return in the money market till it's time to take that money and put it in a short term play. But I never disrupt my long term investment because I'm dollar cost averaging in whether the stock is up, whether it's in the middle or whether it's down. Hopefully that answered your question, Jason. And, and again, appreciate the super chat. So let's keep moving here. What else we got? Jeremy, Richard, how do I buy another rental home with other people's money? Now, you said another rental home. Well, how did you buy the first one? How did you buy the first one? Did you pay cash? Did you go get a loan? Right? So let's just say you, 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 you paid cash for that one, but you don't have no cash to go get the second one. Then you go, you go to the bank. You go to a lender. Right? You go to a lender. And you say, hey, I have a property. I want to buy another one. Here's, here's the property. Here's the potential rental income, or here is the rental income it's currently making. I'm buying it as a rental property. Um, and then they're going to run a cash flow on the property. The lender is. The lender is going to say, okay, here's gross rents. Here's your expenses. Here's, here's, here's what you got to service our loan. And if, 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 if that debt service is a certain debt service, normally they, they, they like to see your debt service from, you know, like 125, right? So for every, so for every, so for every dollar in debt you have, they want to have $1.25 in income. So that's a one, that's a 1.25 debt service ratio. So for every, for every dollar in debt, they want to see $1.25 in income. So they'll run some type of DTI or, 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 cash flow analysis on it. And if it makes sense, they like it. Now, they're going to look at you as well and say, okay, you know, worst case scenario, you don't get a tenant, you don't get no rental income. Are you capable personally 
of paying us our mortgage every month, our, our, our loan payment every month until you get a tenant. So they don't just look at the property. They're going to look at you, too, and say, hey, you're the business. You're the owner. If you don't get a tenant in there, can you pay us? So they're going to look at your credit. They're going to look at your verifiable income. They're going to look at, of course, down payment money. So just go to a lender, man, and, and, and get you a loan. If you, if you got income, proven income through tax returns, decent credit score, and down payment money, get you a good real estate agent, find you a property that makes sense for you, make sure the cash flow works, go to a lender, get you a loan. Here we go. Let's keep moving. Anthony, Rich, keep doing what you're doing. Since I started following your advice, I have established stocks in Weeble and Moo Moo. My man, my man. I appreciate you rocking with me. My man. So let's keep moving on this question here. Started my own handyman business. Was fearful for years until hearing you. You know something, man? That's the reason I do what I do. People first, right? People first. See that right there? That's why I get up in the morning, guys. That in my family and, and, and my faith. That's it. Faith, family, and y'all. That's it. That's my passion and my purpose. And when I hear stuff like that, see, I know, I, I, I know why I do this. I don't worry about the naysayers. I don't worry about the, the coupons and the, and the trolls and... Listen, man, I'm 55 years old, been a black man all my life. It's, it ain't been easy, just like it ain't been easy for many of y'all, no matter what color you are. It ain't been easy. This life ain't easy. But see, when you can find some purpose and passion and, and you can hear things like that, come on, man, that's priceless. So thank you. I appreciate you, Anthony. Thank you for rocking with me. And I'm glad you have taken control of your financial destiny. And you are taking control of your financial power. And man, you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful golden years. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep investing. Keep building. Keep delaying gratification. And once you get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, it'll be all worth it. So appreciate you, man. Let's keep rocking here because we got what? Yeah, we got about. Okay, we got about 18 minutes. So let's get some more questions answered. Like I said, if you, got, if you want your question to the top, Super Chat is the best way to get it to the top. We got one right here from, we got another one from Cristobal. Mr. Richard, are multiple credit cards required for higher probability of approved loans? Not necessarily, not necessarily. You know, see, a lot of times lenders will, they'll look at your credit profile. And if you got too much available credit, that makes them a little, little nervous because they know at any time you can max out that $50,000 worth of credit card and it might throw you into a hole. You may not pay them. So I don't think you need an overwhelming amount of credit cards. I think, I think credit cards used properly are a good financial tool. That's what I think. It's a, good, it's, a good, it's a good financial management tool if you use it properly. And of course, you guys know if you've been looking at me, uh, my videos, y'all know I use credit cards for many, many, many years to, to, to build wealth. I would take my credit card limits, turn them into cash, and then I would take that cash and I'd put them in assets. Now, that ain't for everybody, but I knew what I was doing. So credit cards are, are, are good if they're used properly, but I wouldn't get a, a, a huge amount of them if I'm just going to just sit there with them just to say, I got a, oh, I got $100,000 worth of credit card limits. What good is that going to do you? Because one of these lenders is going to look at that and say, oh, golly, this guy can max out on us at any minute now. And he ain't going to be able to afford the debt service if he max out on us on these credit cards. So now nah, we're going to decline him. So it's a fine line. I think you have a couple. Have you some nice limits? Use them properly. Be able to show the bank that if even if something did happen, you got reserve money, that's your cushion. You got an emergency fund. I think that's the conversation you want to have with them. But I don't think you should have too many limits just sitting around that you never use. Um, I would just have what I need. And then the rest of that stuff, I, I, it's just too easy to get in trouble. I would just have what I need, let the rest go. So let's keep moving here. We got Jackson. 
Does president of the USA matter on which way we should invest? I am looking at their different policies when it comes to money. I can't speak for you guys, but I, I, don't, I don't even follow all that. I vote. I'm a voting American now. Don't get me wrong. But, but do you really think I care who they have in the White House? I don't. Because, see, I understand that's just a figurehead, man. Now, this is my opinion, guys. This, this is, this is, Y'all ain't got to rock with this. This is just my opinion. It's just a figurehead, man. Those people don't really run this country. No. They're just a figurehead. Who do you think put them there? The 1%. The 1% run this country, right? So for me, I don't care who they put in there. Yeah, one guy can be a little crazy. The other guy can be a little sleepy. Um, I don't really care. Neither one of those guys are going to come to my house, ring my doorbell, sit down with me, and say, Richard, how can we help you? Now one of them. So <laughs> flip a coin. I, I don't really care. All I care about is whoever we have in there, don't let somebody just drop a bomb on us. That's all. Long, lo, long as he's tough enough on the rest of the world that, that they don't try to drop a bomb on us, that's all I care about. All the rest of that crap they be doing, I don't care nothing about that. All I want to do, man, is earn, keep what I earn, and invest. And I don't think either one of them are going to have an impact on our financial system. Why? Because the 1% run this country. And the 1% ain't having that. They're not going to have their wealth impacted by some rogue president. I can promise you that. So, no, I don't think either one will have an impact. I mean, Joe Biden has been president for four years. I built a lot of wealth. Before that, Trump was president for four years. I built a lot of wealth. I mean, what they got to do with me building wealth? Nothing. Neither one of them are going to make any, any type of financial decisions that are going to, you know, disrupt what the 1% are doing because the 1% run this country. They run the world. So no, I, I don't worry about that, but you do your due diligence and do what you feel like is best, but I don't think any one of them will, will you know, rich people are rich people. Assets are assets. Companies are companies. Why in the world would one want to get in there and do something stupid to, to just destroy the, they're not going to let that happen. Why? Because the president, number one, doesn't have universal, unilateral power to do whatever he want to. You do have a Congress, right? You got a Congress. That's why we have a Congress. That's why we have a, a president, right? We, we have these two uh, bodies so that one body don't try to go rogue, right? So, so I think we'll be good. Let's keep moving here because we got about, probably got about 13 minutes and then I'm out. Let's see here. Coach, sir, uh, I, think, I think I've already answered that about REITs. Let's move on down. I'm 51, mad, a professional author, and starting a tech company while working a job. Dead strokes. Well, good for you. Maurice Banks. Mr. Fain, I maxed out my Roth contribution for 2023. In VUG, that's a Vanguard fund for you guys that don't know what that is. How long would you say I should wait before investing in more VUG? Well, Maurice, what's your game plan? What are you trying to get accomplished? What's the end result you're looking for? What is the end result you're looking for when it comes to building wealth? What is your you know, number. What's your target net worth you're trying to get to? How much do you want to have in your, 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 your pot at the end of the rainbow? That's going to determine how much more you want to put in, right? I don't think VUG is a bad investment. I think it's a good ETF. It just depends on what the fund is doing. It's not one that I invest in, but, but it's not, a, it, it's okay. But it all comes down to what you're trying to get accomplished. And do you believe that particular investment will get you there, right? That's what you got to figure. Now, you've maxed out the Roth. So I, I'm assuming you'd be putting, in, putting money into, I don't know, 401k or taxable brokerage account or something like that since you've maxed out the Roth um, for 23. But you do got your contribution for 24 you can put in. So maybe that's what you're talking about. But 
It depends on the performance of that, that particular ETF. And if you believe long-term, it'll get you where you're trying to go. And if you do, it may not be a bad play. Or if you want more diversification, find some other Vanguard ETFs that make sense, you know, that can complement VUG. All right, let's keep moving. Josh, what's your opinion on renting where you live and owning what you rent? I believe I heard this from Grant Cardone. Um, it depends, man. It, it depends on what you're trying to get accomplished. I know quite a few folks that don't, they own real estate, but it's all rental properties. They don't own a home like I do. You know, it depends on what the plan is and what you're trying to get accomplished. I think both, both ways work. I always have owned my own home, but I've always bought rental properties too. So you can do it both ways. It just depends on what fits best for you. I don't think either way is wrong. I think the key is investing, investing, investing in something, preferably the big three, right? So that's what I think. I don't think either strategy is wrong. I just think you got to figure out the strategy that works for you. I'm just a home ownership guy. I like owning my own home. I just am. I just, I do. I don't mind paying the HOA fees. I don't mind paying the taxes. Again, money is just a tool to me. I don't care anything about, as long as I got enough to take care of my lifestyle, I, and I love my lifestyle. So I don't mind paying the HOA fees. I don't mind paying the taxes. I love home ownership. But I also love buying rental property for income too. So it depends on where you're at and, and what, what, what makes sense for you and your, your wealth transfer uh, blueprint. Let's see what we got here. Sam Smith, uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, I think we got a couple super chats. So let me, let, me, let me get my butt back here and get these answered. Let's get these super chats answered. Let's see here. What we got? We got Daniel. I'm 27 with a 85K net worth striving to get to 1 million by 40. Okay. All right. All right. What, hey, go look at my live stream from yesterday. Wealth transfer blueprint. I, I, I walk everybody through how to get to a million, two million with the three asset classes that I just mentioned, real estate for income, stocks, business. Now you're at 85K. You're 27 years old, so you got what? 13 years? You can do it. You can do it in 10. You can do it in 10. Go check out that live stream from yesterday that I did. You can do it in 10. Just follow the blueprint that I laid out. Don't try to be the expert. Just dive in. Text me. I'm no, not text me, but email me or, or DM me on Instagram. And um, we'll chop it up a little bit. But I think you can get there. At 30, by 37, man, you'll be a millionaire. By 37. Just follow the blueprint. Now, you're going to have to bust your butt. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to side hustle this thing. You're going to have to elevate your, 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 your skill level. Because, see, the more valuable I am to the marketplace, the more money I make. I can't have a low skill set and think I'm going to build $2 million worth of wealth. It ain't going to happen. You better increase your skill set. And, and, and increasing your skill set, guys, doesn't mean you got to be some PhD, some master's degree, some, you ain't got to be none of that. Increasing your skill set is basically coming up with skill sets that can just make money. I don't care if it's owning a pressure washing company. I don't care if it's a, a lawn care company. I don't care if it's a, whatever it is. It's about money. Building wealth is about money. And what you do with that money. That's what building wealth is about. I don't care. I, 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 I know a lot of doctors that are broke. I know a lot of lawyers that are broke. I know a lot of self-made blue-collar contractors that are loaded. Because they were my clients when I was in banking. Loaded. Loaded. Why? It ain't about that. It's about here and skill set to make money. That's what it's about. And be willing to pay the price. So, 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 Daniel, if you're willing to pay the price, the financial price, you'll be a millionaire by 37, man. Let's move on. 
let's see here. Oh, somebody said a million isn't much. <laughs> I love it. Normally when someone says that, they don't have a million. That's normally. People who say a million ain't enough, they don't have a million. That's all I can tell you on that. So we're going to keep moving. A million ain't enough, but you ain't got a million. Great. All right, let's see here. Let me see if we got time for a few more, and then we're going to get on out of here. I think I got all my super chats, I believe. I don't want to leave no super chats out. And again, man, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see here. All right. So here we go, man. We're going to get a couple more and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this thing up. I really don't understand how Rich has a video. <laughs> Damn near every day talking about the greater wealth transfer. I have a video every day because there's a method to my madness. One, I enjoy making videos. That's, that's part of it. I, I really get a kick out of it, especially the way I do it because it, it ain't that hard, right? I just get up in the morning, um, get out there, walk, start thinking about what I want to talk about, pull out the old iPhone, and I go at it. That's it. See, I got knowledge up here, guys. I got knowledge up here, and that knowledge I like to share. And, and this is my YouTube channel, so I'm going to share it how I want to share it. Again, I appreciate the folks that watch, but I make videos that I want to make. And, and here's the good news. You ain't got to watch them. So if you don't like them, you believe they're repetitive, you don't like them, stop watching. Problem solved. But if you think I'm going to change what I'm doing... Especially when I hear a comment from a gentleman like Anthony, who I just read, say, hey, man, rocking with you changed my life, my financial life. You really think I care about somebody who, who wants to criticize me about the way I make my videos when you don't have to watch? <laughs> Come on, man. We got we to gotta stop this. This is our problem, though. See, we want to try to worry about things that we shouldn't be worried about. Instead of us worrying about us and building our wealth and figuring out how we get to the end of the rainbow and we got a pot of gold, instead of us figuring out that, we want to go chase other people's problems or, or, or get in other people's business. Why you do this? Why you don't do that? Don't watch. Pretty simple. It's easy for me. See, I don't, I don't have to go to someone's comment section and say something negative. I just stop watching the videos. Why do I find I, I, I need to go to their comment section and, and, and harass them and their people that are there to learn something? But that's what we do. That's what we do. And that's one of the reasons why in this country we're in so much financial trouble when it comes to the people of this country. The 99 percent, 150 million adults, no money in retirement. None. 62% of Americans live in paycheck to paycheck. That's a shame. That is a shame because we're focused on all the wrong things. We need to focus on us and how we build our wealth, how we take care of our family. Stop worrying about other people. Stop wasting all your energy worried about the videos I make. I'm good. Appreciate you guys. I'm going to get on out of here. I think we are done with this live. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have something else popping in here before I get out of here. But I want to say thank you guys again for rocking with me. I want y'all to hit that thumbs up for me uh, if you enjoyed the live stream. I'm going to do these occasionally. Most of the live streams are going to be me just talking, giving you my little two cents. But every now and then, maybe, maybe once a, let's say once a quarter, I'll do these types of Q&As, and of course, I'll let you guys know like I did today. I'll try to give you like an hour, two hours heads up before I do the calls. That way, for some of y'all that have questions, um, you, you can get them ready. Um, but I appreciate y'all and all the great questions. Thank you. Hopefully, you learned something. Hopefully, you'll take some of this information and apply it to your financial life. Hopefully, you will tap in to the videos that I do on a daily basis, the whole key ears. 
the key here is to get you guys to thinking, yeah, it's repetitive, but it's, it's that way for a reason because that's how we learn. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me. If you want up to 15 free stocks uh, from Moomoo, uh, there's a link down in the description box. Uh, Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks. Uh, five free stocks when you put $100 in the account, 15 free stocks if you put $1,000 in the brokerage account. And then you're going to take that money and do what? Start transferring wealth to yourself and your family, right? And you're going to do that on a monthly basis every single month for 10 years. And guys, I'm telling you, you will change your financial life if you make that commitment to yourself and to your family. I think you will change your life. So thank you guys again for rocking with me. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Share the video, smash the like button, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.